Hi, welcome to episode 141 of the Passionate Spinner podcast. My name is Tracy. You can find me as Schnüffelt here on Ravelry and Instagram. I have fiber in my face. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Um, there's a Ravelry group. Go over and check it out. We have a year-long make-along next year going on. I'm going to talk about it in the end of it. So, yeah, this is off to a very weird start already. <laughs> but, yeah, it's what it is. I have lots of things to show today. And I really wanted to podcast right now because most of those things are gifts. So they will not be here to show again after Christmas. So let's get started with what I'm wearing. It is also the first thing I have for knitting in the past. It is the Hogwarts sweater. The sweater pattern is called Hogwarts A History. It's by Megan Regan. I've talked about the pattern before and I have written very in-depth notes on my Ravelry project page because this pattern has some mistakes in it and if you follow the pattern exactly as written you will not end up with a good sweater and one of the people who has knit this sweater sadly experienced this and she had to rip out her whole sweater. The main problem is that the instructions for the short rows um, are you know okay-ish but when it comes to separating for the sleeves and the body, your beginning of round marker is in the center back, but she has you separate as it were at the underarm. So you will end up with your, you know, short row higher here and lower here instead of front and back. So you have to really take care of that. And I've written everything about that in my show notes, oh, not show notes, in the project notes on Ravelry. So apart from that, I'm very happy with this sweater. The orange that I used is Opal Royal. It is a sock weight or fingering weight sock yarn with a um, Lurex thread, which is kind of scratchy, um, going through from um, the people who make Opal sock yarn. And it was a very short time that they made that. And it, you can't, it's discontinued already. I think they only made it in two or three colors and it's it's gone. The black is also a glitter yarn, and this one is Regia Soft Glitter, which is a bit misleading because there's nothing soft about this yarn. <laughs> it also has this very scratchy Lurex um, thread going through. So it is not next to the skin soft. You know, it's on my neck and it's already a bit scratchy. So I'm going to stand up. Uh, I know that what I wear underneath doesn't go with the sweater, but I need to show that off later. So, you know. Okay, so here's the sweater. It is this long. bit, you know, about five centimeters below my, my hip bone. It is a, quite oversized. I made it like that because I wanted to have just a easy throw-on sweater. I actually wanted to have it long-sleeved, but I ran out of the black yarn. And I couldn't find the same dye lot, which is, you know, normally not a problem with commercial yarn. You can get away with it. But I had ordered one skein of this in a different dye lot and the Lurex was showing way more. So it was way more glittery and I couldn't use it. So for the pattern or what I did, it is a choose your own color work pattern. So I first did the lightning bolt scar. Then this owl here is from a different pattern. It is a free scarf pattern on Ravelry. I have linked that also in my project notes. And it's for a double knit scarf. So these stars or snowflakes or what you want to call that are in between the owls are not in the chart because with double knitting, you know, you don't have the problem of long floats because there are no floats. So I put those in and then the Deathly Hallows pattern with these stars again was as written as a pattern. And I kind of didn't think about it that much because if I had, I would just have broken up this star pattern here in between and above the Deathly Hallows sign to just blend in better. But I didn't think that far. So I'm still very happy with it. It is very glittery. It is... It is gorgeous. I had to change quite a bit about the numbers to make the owls fit, but it 
wasn't that hard. You know, I just had to increase like eight more stitches and then later increase less to make it work. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the, uh, this finished sweater. And I don't know what else to say about it. I'm quite, I'm pleased with the outcome. Not very pleased with the process, but yeah, can't change it now. So the other thing I have done, and this makes me very happy. I mean, it's, I've finished the knitting. I still have to weave in the ends, but that is the only thing that's left to do. And it is in my big project bag, which already should tell you what it is. It is the Montrealer that I knit as a secret Christmas gift for my husband. It is finished. I finished it two days ago and I actually wanted to weave in the ends then, but I couldn't because I didn't find time. So here we go. I don't have all the labels for the yarn, but I have most of the labels and I also have the pattern. So let me show you. Let's show you what I did. So this is the sweater. It's called the Montrealer. It's by um, designs by Dells. It is a hoodie with a kangaroo pocket in the front that I didn't do because first of all, I wanted to cut back on the knitting time. And also um, I didn't want it to accentuate my husband's belly. So yeah, I didn't do it. My main yarn is Rowan Fine Art Aran Weight. And that is, as you can see, a mix of wool, mohair, alpaca, and silk. It is a very nice yarn, but it is a bit, it's not super soft. Let's say it like that. So this was this yarn. I had 10 skeins to start with. It's a hand dyed Rowan yarn. And I have one full skein and this left. This is a bit more than half. So I would say I have, I've used about 8.4 skeins. So I have enough left of this to make something else. And then my three contrast colors that I used were, um, this is Hedgehog Fibers. I used most of this because I used this for the eye cord. Then I have this yarn. It's also Hedgehog Fibers. And this one was or is another crafty girl. And I'm tr I'm going to knit a sleeveless hooded vest with a zipper in the front for Tim out of the leftover yarn because I had made one of these for him already, but he outgrew it and he wore that one a lot. So I'm thinking of using the leftover yarn from my husband's hoodie to make a hooded vest for Tim. Because honestly, for anything else, it's not enough. So that's the only thing I can do. Okay, I still have all the markers in here and I need to weave in the ends. But apart from that, it is done. It's done, it's finished, it's huge. Here's the hood, here's the eye cord in the hood. I knit that one as well. It tells you to buy drawstring or something, but I didn't, I, I made it. And it has like a, it's almost like a welt. No, it's not almost. It's exactly like a welt at the end. That is the casing for the drawstring. It's finished. It is finished. I changed not a whole lot. I knit the 3X size because I wanted it to be big enough so that he could use it as a kind of jacket instead of a sweater because of the wool, you know, he is very sensitive. So I think that he might as, uh, just wear it on top of a thinner sweater as a jacket to go outside instead of a sweater inside. So because of that, I lengthened the cuffs on the sleeves and did thumb holes in both of them. So he could, you know, just thread his thumb through to have it stay where it should be. And that is the only thing I changed except for leaving off the pocket and because I'm lazy, I knit this on, on the inside instead of um, binding off and sewing it on because I just, I don't enjoy that. So I did a knit, I knit it on and then bound it off, which gives you this nice 
edge on the inside. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it is a beautiful sweater. I hope that he will not be too sensitive to wear it because I used 13 skeins of Aran weight hand dyed yarn for this sweater. So this is the most expensive thing I have ever made. And um, yeah, I really hope he can use it. I got the the Hedgehog Fibers yarn was part of my Podluck club that I had several times now. So I had these come as part of that club. The Another Crafty Girl I bought to knit a hat like, I don't know, eight years ago or so and I didn't use up so far so it was perfect for this sweater. And the Rowan yarn I bought on sale, thankfully. But yeah, still, <laughs> it's a very expensive sweater. And I just hope you will love it as much as I do because I think this is gorgeous. Don't you think it's gorgeous? I love this. So yeah, this is the Montrealer for my husband and I will, you know, get model pictures after Christmas. Uh, one thing I want to tell is the hood. I've never seen a hood constructed in that way, but I like it. You knit it not in one piece, but in two panels and sew up the back and make a three no bind off for, for a few stitches. And it really is a really nice shape. I, I enjoyed that. While I was doing it, I was like, what, why, why am I doing this? But it was worth it. I just trusted the pattern. So good. Here we go. It's done. And it's not Christmas Eve morning. I finished it with five days to spare, which is unheard of for me, but it is done. And so are every other Christmas gift. So I don't have to rush to finish anything for Christmas anymore. It's amazing. So for knitting in the present, <laughs> this is a very unusual sight in this podcast. I have socks, only socks, five pairs of them. After losing my sock mojo like two years ago, it's finally back and it's back with a vengeance and I'm really excited about it. So let's get started. I'm going to start with these. These are socks for my husband out of Sunset Stitches yarn. It's a self-striping and I really enjoy this. It's beautiful. So I have the first done, as you can see. This is a German size 45, which means that the foot is about what is it? Four, eight, 12, 12 inches long. Very big feet. And the second one is started. I'm here. I knit all my socks on DPN size two, you know, for fingering weight. That's a 2.75 millimeter. And my husband's socks are knit with over 72 stitches because I'm a tight knitter, but I really like the the gauge and the fabric. I need a new camera. This is one of the things I will change for this podcast next year. I have this much left, which is plenty. Like I said, it is Sunset Stitches. And I checked her Etsy shop because I wanted to just see if she's still in business. And I think her last review for something was in 2014. So she's been out of business forever. And I have no idea if she will come back because the shop is still there. It's just on um, vacation mode. So I don't know. So this was part of my Harry Potter club that I had. I have a lot of Sunset Stitches yarn. She used to do clubs for Harry Potter and for The Hobbit. And you know, you know me. I love The, uh, the Hobbit and I love Harry Potter. So I had those clubs for a while. And this is a 75-25 sock yarn. And the colorway is called Expecto Patronum. Sunset Stitches. And they are out of business, unfortunately, because, like I said, I have a lot of their yarn and I love this yarn. So these are really pretty. Um, my husband tried the first one on already because I showed it to him and he he hasn't received socks in a long time. He was so excited. He was like, oh, can I put it on? It's like, yeah, sure, you can put it on. But you have to give it back. So this is it. It is gorgeous. I knit my socks top down with a heel flap and gusset 
the traditional way because I like this one best. I tried out lots of different um, heels and I tried out lots of different toes and I just always circle back to this one. I learned knitting socks when I was 12. I'm almost 36. So that's been a long time. And in that time, um, I've knit roughly somewhere between 320 and 340 pairs of socks. And I know that because I am a very geeky person and I kept a notebook where I would write down every single pair of socks that I've knit. And I stopped doing that three or four years ago. And at that point I had crossed the 300 mark. So lots of socks. And like I said, I tried different heels. I tried different toes because, you know, I had lots of opportunity to do that. And I always come back to this. This is my... The version that I like to do for the heel is basically exactly what I had learned to do when I was 12 years old. And uh, the, the toe I modified for myself the way I like it best. So yeah, this is how I knit socks. And if you want to learn how to knit socks, you should check out Fiber School, which will start in January. And I will talk about that more in a separate video. So yeah, this is a go. And also what I have and might be interesting for you. This little thing was a, it's, I actually have no idea what it is. It is a, it's this little thing where you can put paper in. And I think this came with another bigger bit at the top where you could put in a CD and it was punched. So you could put it in a binder. And you could write down the important bits for what was on that CD. And then my husband gave me these things and I was like, what the hell am I going to do with these? I don't store CDs that way. But then I cut off this bottom bit and I wrote down the most important information that I need for knitting socks. So I'm a German size 38 foot and my husband's a German size 45. So I have the normal sock like I just showed and have all the important information. I have the cast on, how long I like to knit the leg, how long I like to knit the heel flap, how long the foot needs to be before I start the toe, and then how long the foot needs to be in, in, you know, in the end. And I also have that for our two sizes, for the afterthought heel, because the foot length changes quite a bit when you do an afterthought heel because the heel has a different shape and therefore different dimensions. So this is what I usually keep in my sock bag. So I just know what to do. And my sock bag is from Mad Bird, which is one of my favorite bag makers. And I do not know if she's still in business because since I started making my own bags, I haven't bought many. So I don't know, but Mad Bird bags are my favorite ones that I bought before I made them. So now I need to get rid of this because there's more. That was a lot of talk for a plain vanilla sock. <laughs> okay. I have another plain vanilla sock. This one's for me and I've showed it before. It is leading man fiber arts at uh, the foliage colorway, which is a very tracy color. And I have finished the heel and I'm almost at the toe. This is what it looks like. I'm knitting this on US twos again, 64 stitches this time for my foot. And uh, the needles are looking needles. They are my first pair of socks that I'm knitting with these. And I actually quite enjoy the DPNs. So these are nice. And here is the label. It's Leading Men Fiber Arts. I got this when they started dying years ago. I ordered once from them because, you know, shipping from America to Germany is quite high. So I only ordered once and I got three skeins, I think. And this is my favorite. So these are for myself and they are in a, what are you, 6X stitches? Do you have a label? Bird leg bags. It's in a bird leg bag. And I love it. It's this tiny box bag with the turtles all over. 
and a turtle sippable. bowl. So that's that. Now, I have three pairs of colorwork socks in the needles. I've never done colorwork socks before. And then I showed this one last week, and it's the Advent Socks by... I don't remember her name, but she is Remembrance Pottery on Instagram. And this is a free pattern. It's like an advent calendar style. You knit one piece, uh, what one pattern a day. And I modified the last two patterns into one to make it shorter because otherwise it would have been way too big. So it's just a tiny bit too big, <laughs> but I can wear these. So this is my first finished sock. I like it. I used Regia Angora for the heel cuffs and toes and uh, just normal plain Regia for the background color. And all the color work yarn that I'm using is scraps that I had. And I have started the second sock and I'm way behind because I only have a cuff and I should have, you know, the first pattern or the first two patterns after the toe. And I don't. So these will not be ready for Christmas Eve or Christmas to wear, but it's what it is. I'm going to get back to these now that the sweater is done and I will just enjoy knitting them whenever I find the time to put in one or two patterns. So yeah, I really like these. This yarn here is a bit too bright or too light to really show. It's the same yarn that I used for the acorns, but uh, yeah. I don't care. Then last time I showed you yarn that I wanted to use to cast on a pair of socks when my son, son told me off and said, no, you're going to work on that sweater. So I started these socks. They are a pattern by Drops Design. And I know that when it comes to some of their patterns, they are very heavily leaning on designs by indie dyers, uh, indie designers. But for their color work, they are not. They've had color work patterns out forever. And this is from a long time ago as well. So I started it and I have not gotten very far, but this is very wide. On the other hand, it doesn't stretch as much. So I think it will be fine in the end. So wait, let me take out this needle so you can see better. This is where I am. I'm using the orange is Drops Charisma. This light yellowy color here is Rowan Lightweight DK and it's quite a bit thinner than the other yarns but you don't use it as much so I think it's fine and the purple is a mystery yarn from my stash that I have absolutely no clue what it is so yeah I like it I think this will be really pretty in the end and this is where I am it's a DK weight sock which I've never knit before I know, I know, a hundred million pairs of socks, but no DK weight ones. And I'm knitting these on a US 6 to 4 millimeter. And I did the cuff, I think, on a 3.5 mil that's a US 4. So here they are. They are gorgeous. I love these. They will be for me and no one else. Just for me. So that is this. And then I was knitting these socks and I was knitting a sock, uh, the, you know, the plain vanilla is for my husband. And then Tim came in and he's like, mom, are you going to knit socks for me as well? I was like, sure, let's go downstairs. You can pick out some sock yarn. I'm going to knit a pair of socks for you. And he looked at me like, no, I want cool ones. Like the ones you're making for yourself. These ones he was talking about. So yeah, I had to knit, <laughs> I had to cast out a pair of color work socks for my son. And I did. It's in my sock basket that I used to have five or six starry pairs of socks in and it is resurrected. And it's another drops pattern. And I looked on Instagram, uh, on Ravelry for a pattern that I would like. And we decided on this one with those little Santas. And I'm, I modified it a bit because I didn't want to do the whole thing in color work. So I'm not doing that. I have one done. It need I need to embroider the eyes for the Santas. But apart from that, I have fiber in my nose now. I don't know where it came from. Apart from that, the first sock is done. This fits. 
you know, it's a tiny bit long in the foot. And this here is a bit too wide, but I couldn't change it because, you know, that's the smallest size available. But my mother-in-law actually had the idea of sewing on one of those leather soles and make it into a pair of really warm house shoes or slippers. So I think I will do that. Okay, so this is the first sock. It's another DK weight sock. I've never done it before and now I'm doing twice, uh, doing it twice at the same time, or, you know. So this is the main yarn or the red yarn. It is Rigia 8 ply. Here we go. Rigia 8 ply that I found in my stash and I had just one single skein. I think I used this to knit a hat and this is left over. I'm not sure. So yeah, that's the red. For the main color, I'm using two skeins of Drops Fabel held together. The um, So the pattern actually calls for just white to knit this bit. And I used two different neutrally colors. You know, I used a just normal neutral for the beard and the pom-pom. And I used this kind of vanilla color. You know, when I hold them together, you can see that there's a difference. And I used this one for the actual face which, you know, means more ends to weave in, but it just looks nicer, I think, when it has a distinct face and a distinct beard. And the black is also just some Legia held double. I wound off these teeny tiny skeins to use, you know, as the second ball of yarn, because I, this is very little amounts of yarn that you need. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. I knit it in one afternoon because it's a DK weight sock in a children's size. So it's not that much work, but I haven't found time to make the second one yet, but I think I want to try to finish them so you can wear them on Christmas. But the problem is I don't have that sole thing. So I need to go out on Monday and find those. I have no idea who carries that stuff around here. So that's going to be hard, but yeah. So oh, that's my socks. That's all for knitting in the present. And I hope that will change soon because I love knitting socks right now, but I also want to make other, other things, which leads me to knitting in the future. I am going to do a Christmas Eve cast on, which is something that was started by Danny from Little, Little Bobbins Knits. I don't know how many years ago, but she started it. And I'm still doing it because I quite like the idea. So I have decided on my project. I'm going to start the Love Note sweater by Tinker Knits. And it is a sweater where you hold fingering weight together with a mohair. And I'm going to use this yarn here. It's Northbound Knitting. It's a merino silk fingering. It's a 50-50 blend. And I have two skeins in a metal urgy colorway and I got these as a birthday gift from my friend Linda this year. And I'm going to use this caramel -y color for the mohair. It's the Lana Grossa Silk Hair and it's, you know, it's the exact same shade of brown as is in here. And I'm going to start this on Christmas Eve and I want to wear it when I go visit her in April. So that's my plan. This is my Christmas Eve cast on. The Love Note by Tinker Knits out of these beautiful yarns. So that's all I have actually planned for knitting in the future, but you know, that will change. Okay, I do have some new stuff. More than I should have, to be fair, but I do have new stuff. M um, we had our Christmas um, knit club a few weeks ago in the beginning of December. And, you know, I got yarn. I bought yarn for my friend Sandra, who is a wonderful dyer. And um, she had three skeins of each of these two colorways. And I mean, this is green speckles and this is yellow and brown speckles. It's like she was made, she made them basically for me. She didn't, but you know, you know what I mean. So I got all three of each color and I'm going to make sweaters for myself out of this because her sock, sock yarn is so super soft and amazing that this is just, oh, 
So yeah, I got six skeins of yarn. I shouldn't have gotten any yarn, but you know, that's just what it is. So let's, let's get rid of you. And I also ordered something. I love Marie Wallen. I think she's amazing. Her designs are just so beautiful and so, um, what is the English word for that? Edel. Let's go with the German word. So, and her new book, Gentle, was released in the beginning of December. So I ordered that book and other books that I really wanted to have and hadn't had a chance yet to get. So I got the Gentle book, which is the newest one that she just came out with. And it's gorgeous. So I kind of want to make everything, but I think the first thing that I want to tackle, and this is going to be crazy, are the Lupin socks that need like a million colors. Uh, but I want to try and I want to try using, you know, my scrap yarn that I already have and not get anything because I, yeah, I have enough. So I got the Gentle and I also got the book that came out before that, which is called Meadow. And this is gorgeous as well. And yeah, I mean, just the, the cover sweater is just stunning. So, and then I also got her first two collections because they each have a pattern in them that I really want to make. And I had in my Ravelry queue for a while. And then I thought, why get the single pattern on Ravelry when I could get the whole book instead? So I got the whole book instead. And I'm, I want to, yeah, here it is. This is the sage dress tunic thing. And I love this one. So that's the one that I had in my cue from the book one and also I know I know I love this I love this cardigan check it thing it's crochet and knit in one thing and it can look very um hippie I'm gonna say but I think if you use different colors this could be a very beautiful classic piece we will see and I also got the collection number two. And um, I'm not quite sure why. Let me see. Let me flip, flip through. Maybe I can find the reason. I think it's this cabled cardigan. I think this is the reason why I got it. Is it? Yes. So I got these four books by Marie Wallin and I, I love them. I want to make a lot of things out of these. So now I'm at sewing and I'm going to take off my sweater because the first thing I want to talk about is the dress that I'm wearing underneath this sweater. So let's get rid of it. So now I have decided to make a dress for myself. Last weekend, I was, I came downstairs and I knew that I had to get sewing because I needed to make some Christmas gifts. And then I decided, you know what? Fuck it. I want to make something for myself. So I did. And I made this dress. It's the Heather dress by Sew Over at London. I'm going to stand up and show you. This is what it looks like. It has really, really big pockets here. You can do this in a contrast fabric or use the same fabric and I decided to do it in a contrast and from the back it looks like this basically the same just without the pockets and it is a bit about knee length I lengthen it about five centimeters because her original is quite short and I'm yeah I didn't like it that short you know I want things to go to my knee oh god I so need a new camera Can you please unfreeze? Thank you. So yeah, this is the Heather dress by Sew Over at London. And um, I have the pattern here. I do, but I don't need to show you because you can't see anything except for someone else wearing a dress like this. So I did a mix of three sizes for this. 
everything at the top, uh, you know, until basically my belly button is a size 14 in the pattern. And then I graded it out to a basically 17. I graded out somewhere between the 16 and 18 line to make my hips fit in as well. And I'm really happy with the fit and how it turned out in general. So I got this fabric, which has little heads on it and faces. I got this fabric specifically to make the Heather dress. And I had this green already in my stash. And um, the head dress is like a French terry. And the this one is like a lightweight Ponte di Roma or a heavyweight jersey fabric. So this is a knit dress, which makes this super comfortable. It doesn't have a zipper or a closure. You just slip it on and you're done. So yeah, I made that one and I was very happy about it. I made the whole thing on my overlocker, not as the pattern suggests to sew it together on the sewing machine and then just overlock the edges. I put it together in the overlocker and um, yeah, I would do it like that over and over. And I just zigzagged around the hems and here on the neckline to just hold the um, seam allowances down. That's it. That's what I did. And then I did make all the Christmas gifts that I needed to make. I started by knit sewing loops, you know, just like cowls, but out of fabric for my in-laws. And I made two of each of those. One I will keep for future gifts for other people or for myself. And one will go to the in-laws. So this one is for my mother-in-law. And I quite like this fabric. I think it's gorgeous. I got those fabrics as big fabric coupons at the fabric market. And um, I originally planned on using one coupon for each of those loops, but they would be way too big. So I cut them in half and then made a loop out of them, which is a super easy thing to do. And this is what they look like. So this is the first one that I made. And like I said, this one's for my mother-in-law. I will not, I will put on all of them because now my hair is already awful. It doesn't matter anymore. So my mother-in-law, then I made these two for my sisters-in-law. My husband has two sisters and yeah. So this one's for, the youngest. This one's also the shortest because the fabric was the width, width wise the small, shortest, smallest, whatever. So this is what this one looks like. I really like these. I think they all turn out really nice. You know, you can wash them easily. And then this one here, <laughs> it's a chiffon fabric which I've never used before. So I had to put in a different needle, a sewing needle, because I usually have an 80 sewing needle in, you know, that's the usual, just universal. But for this, I used the 65 because the fabric was pulling because of the too big needle. And this is what this one looks like. It's the softest out of all of them because, you know, the fabric is uh, very drapey, but I like how they turned out. Making a loop like this takes about 15 minutes. It's super easy. It's super quick, especially if you use just one piece of fabric so you can fold it onto each other. It's, it's a three seam project, super easy, super quick, but very useful and something that, you know, the other one can actually just use. This is the, the biggest out of all of them, I think. But yeah. I made, like I said, six in general. These were the three that will stay with me. And here are the ones folded up for Christmas gifts that I just need to pack somehow. So that's the loops. Made six, took about an hour and 15 minutes or so. And then, took a bit longer. <laughs> I made a blanket for my nephew. My husband's youngest sister had a baby on my husband's birthday. So they share a birthday now and I had gotten this quilted fabric and I just liked it. You know, it was a leftover piece. I liked the fabric and I thought I could do a, like, um, a jacket for Tim. And then I decided it would also make a beautiful blanket for a baby boy to just, you know, put on the floor so he could crawl on top and play on top as like a play mat thing or as an actual blanket. So I made this blanket. It is quite big. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it 
to you like this. So this is a quarter of the size. And all I had to do, I washed the fabric and all I had to do was put on a binding. So the front looks like this, it's these cute woodland animals and the back is like that. And I used a light blue fabric to just make a binding and that is it. Instant Christmas gift. And it's a very useful thing as well. You know, if you have a, a baby, you can never have enough of these things because kids throw up or stuff happens and you have to wash the one you have. So it's always good to have another one. So these are the Christmas gifts for my in-laws. And then I made the Christmas gift for my mom. My hair is quite bad now. <laughs> Can't change it. My hair is always bad because I have very bad hair, but you know, sometimes it looks nicer than other times. So then I made a Christmas gift for my mother. Months and months ago, I made those tea bags. And I think I sold two on my Etsy shop and all the other ones went to my knit group and I kept a breakfast tea one for myself and my mother wanted to have the other breakfast tea one and I made that one. I finally made it and she will get it for Christmas. So this is what it looks like. I used up my, uh, I used up my old labels that I had and it has a little tea charm as a zipper pull. It is a tea pot with a little, um, mug, a tea, tea cup. The lining fabric that I always use on the inside. So this is my, my Christmas gift for my mom and I will fill it with some sock yarn. I'm going to do that after I finish podcasting. And then I had finished all the Christmas gifts and I decided, you know what, I really still want to sew something. So I dug out fabric that I bought a few years ago and I made a Clio dress by Tilly and the Buttons out of it. It is a very cute gnome fabric and I used it with a red corduroy and made a Christmas Clio. And I had some, some left over of this fabric, but not a lot. You know, it's just, this is corduroy and it just attaches to all the dirt and all the fluff. I hate that. <laughs> That's the one thing I hate about corduroy. It will just, you know, it's like a magnet for fluff. So I had small, small, small bits of the gnome fabric left. And I also had in my leftover bin about, yeah, this high and one width of um, corduroy left. So I made this project bag for myself. This is mine, definitely mine. It is quite large, as you can see. I wanted to have a big sweater bag for myself out of this gnome fabric. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. It is the cutest thing. I had one super small strip of gnome fabric that I used for a handle. So that is all used up now. The back is just corduroy, nothing else. And the top, I used a zipper and it is exactly the length of the zipper. So I didn't do taps or anything. I just sewed the zipper in and yeah, it's perfect. And it already holds the remaining yarn for my Christmas Eve cast on. And if I uh, put in the, the other yarn and the pattern, you can actually tell how large this bag is because it now holds five skeins of mohair and two skeins of fingering weight yarn. And it's not even half full. Can you see this is, there's still lots of room in here. So I'm super happy with this. It's exactly what I wanted. A big project bag for a sweater for myself. So the first gnome fabric, uh, bag is done. And then I still had two smaller bits of the gnome fabric and I thought about piecing them together and make another big one. But I just, I thought that piecing that gnome fabric would just look awful. So I didn't, I instead made two more bags. The first one is this medium style bag, which is, you know, my usual go-to size. And size wise, I didn't measure them to be a specific size. I just used the gnome fabric bit as large as possible and just, you know, worked everything else out from there. So that is the middle size gnome fabric bag. And it looks like this. No handle because it's not that large. And, you know, the star fabric on the inside. Um, so it's basically the same size as this one, you know, it's 
let me put them in here. They're almost the same size. This one is a tiny bit longer, but a bit more shallow. So it's the same size. And I still had one little bit left, but I was running short on the corduroy. So I cut out the back of the corduroy first this time and had this strip of gnome fabric left. And these two bits of corduroy go in the other direction. You know, this one is striped up and down. The ones on the front are striped left to right. And on one side, you can't really tell because it's at the bottom. I had to piece the corduroy together. There's one extra seam down here. And also the label is at the bottom because someone was very smart. <laughs> I put the label at the bottom because I always do that, you know, have it towards the bottom of the bag, as you can tell. But it just <laughs> worked out that way that it is now exactly on the edge on the back on the bottom. So yeah, it's a hidden design feature. And so this is the smallest bag. And I also had a zipper that was the exact length of the bag. So I put that one in and that's the, the small bag, which is a perfect um, sock bag or a one skein shawl would also fit in here. And I asked my husband um, because I wanted to keep the big one. I made that one because I wanted to have it. As my husband is like, I'm not sure if I should sell the other two because, you know, I don't need three bags in the same fabric. Um, but he said he sh I should just keep them, but I'm still not sure. I kind of want to keep the small one and this one might go up for grabs. Um, I will not put them in my Etsy shop because I decided to retire the Etsy shop. All of the Etsy policies that came out in the last two years just don't align with my beliefs, you know? Um, so the Etsy shop is gone. Not yet gone, but it will be. And I'm, if I make project bags like this one or the small spindle bag that I made and I have them for grabs, I will put them, I will just do a thread in my Ravelry group and I will put them in there and tell you what I want to have for the bag. And if you want to have it, you just tell me there. I think that's what I want to do because that's the easiest way and yeah, I just don't want to deal with Etsy anymore. So yeah, this one will stay with me and this one I think will go in my Ravelry group for sale because I don't need three of those. But I'm going to keep the small one because it's a bit effed up and also I think it's just this will make a, a great, great set, you know? So yeah, I made these as well and I'm super happy. You know, I had all of the material laying around. I had the zippers that were the perfect length. I had this gnome fabric, which is now completely used up. I have a bit of the fabric because this was a border print. So I have a bit of the other half that is just this sandy color that I will keep to do embroideries on and use for future projects. But the gnomes, on, you know itself are all used up and this corduroy is used up except for this bit that's all I had left in the end so yeah that makes me quite happy I made beautiful things and used up all of the material so yeah I made those gnome bags and I'm really really happy about it now gnome bags away okay I am at everything else now so if you only hear for the crafting, I hope you have a great Christmas and um, I'm probably not going to podcast again this year. I don't know yet if I can put one in after Christmas before New Year. We will see. But I'm going to just in case say Merry Christmas, Merry Holidays, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, if you celebrate. If you don't, it's fine. Don't have to feel bad about that. <laughs> and um, Happy New Year for everybody else. The next VKN is not on a Saturday. It's the exception of exceptions this time. The next VKN will be on Sunday, the 29th of December, because I'm away on the 28th. I'm invited for dinner. And also I couldn't just, you know, move it a week because on the 4th, which is the next Saturday, that would be, you know, happening. I have Nick Club at my house and we usually just don't, we are not done in time for a VKN. So 
we would have just had to switch it up another week and that would mean a month in between and I didn't want to do that. So next VKN is on a Sunday, 29th of December, 9 p.m. Berlin time, like it always is. And uh, I just hope you can make it. I would love to see you there. I know it's a very busy time of we uh, the year, but I just wanted to give it another try for a end of year meeting kind of thing. And then <laughs> last two things. Uh, the first thing is, I'm not sure which, which one to start with. So I talked, I think two episodes ago, body, mind, and soul was my, my topic for this talk. And I told you that I always get sick when my soul gets out of balance. And I just got proof for that. <laughs> I had my first ever physical this week because, you know, I'm 35 and I thought it's just a good idea to just have that done now. And then I can do it again when I'm 40. So, um, I had my first ever physical, which was amazing because my body is perfectly healthy. You know, all the blood work and all the tests that we did and everything is turned out to be great. So I'm a very healthy person, which is nice. It's good to know, isn't it? So, um, but I'm still sickish and just meh. And I haven't slept well in months. So I talked to my doctor about it and she is wonderful. She's a great person. And uh, she told me that everything that she heard me tell her um, points toward emotional burnout. I was like, ha, ah, amazing. <laughs> Just what you need for Christmas. So uh, yeah, I was right. My body is sickish, but I'm healthy, which is weird. But um, it shows that my insides are unbalanced, you know? So she gave me a lot of tips and a lot of things to do to think about and to work out so I can get into balance again. So I, I am not only healthy, but I also feel healthy, which sounds weird, but it's a thing. <laughs> it's a definite thing. Um, and I'm sure you have experienced something like that as well, where you're actually not really sick, but you constantly feel this little, mm, you know, I don't know how to explain, but yeah, <laughs> I was quite, I was happy about being physically healthy, but kind of devastated about the emotional burnout part because that just doesn't sound nice and it's not a nice thing to be experiencing as well. So yeah, that was eye opening. And then the other thing, Christmas. Christmas is approaching. It's Christmas Eve in three days, which is where Germans do Christmas. You know, we give gifts at Christmas Eve in the evening. And um, I always wanted to be a person who just loves Christmas and everything that comes with Christmas. And I just, I'm not. I almost hate Christmas. When I was a kid, my parents always fought on Christmas Eve every single year. And then I got older and my husband and I, and I moved in together and we had the first Christmas alone in our flat and it was the first Christmas that I actually really enjoyed. And we did that for a while. And then my father-in-law passed away on Christmas Eve, which also dampened the spirits quite a bit. And that has been, that was 11 years ago now. So for 11 years now, Christmas has always had this dark shadow on top of it. And uh, yeah, now this year, my in-laws are applying to my um, sister-in-law to visit her. And my family will come over for Christmas, which also did not happen easily. It happened after a lot of fighting and a lot of tears on my end. And uh, yeah, just I'm done with Christmas already. It's I just I don't know why. I want to have Christmas where I'm just happy. And I enjoy every single day in front of Christmas. And I just, the lead up is amazing. And Christmas is amazing. And it just never happens, you know. I'm going to be 36 in January. And I've had maybe five Christmases where I say that was great. And the rest of them were shit. So I don't know what it is. 
with me and Christmas. We just, we don't get along. I don't, uh, I love gifting things for Christmas, you know, so that part I enjoy a lot. So I've been gathering gifts for people I want to give stuff to for months. I always start with the, you know, brainstorming and gifting ideas when school starts in September. So I've had most Christmas gifts forever, but everything else just sucks. <laughs> And I've, I don't, I just don't know why I want to have really nice Christmas without fighting, without any shouting, without tears, without just, uh, I'm just, yeah. I'm done with Christmas. I don't know. Last year I had the problems with my mother-in-law. This year I had problems with my sister and it's just, uh, it sucks. It sucks. I just hope that Christmas itself will be nice because I do have a toddler, you know, and I want him to experience Christmas at the, as this magical thing. And it's hard to make that happen if you yourself just are not feeling like that at all. So, yeah. That is it. Also, also, no, it's, that's not it. We had 18 degrees this week, Celsius. I went outside without a jacket on because it was so warm. I had my balcony door open for two hours in the afternoon because it was so warm. How am I supposed to get in a Christmas spirit? I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, it should be cold and snowy and just yucky and it's not. I mean, it is yucky today, but it's not cold. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and you are in the spirit for things. And if not, just know that you are not alone. Absolutely not alone. So I'm not sure, like I said, if it will get to podcast again between the years, which is the time we call between Christmas and New Year's around here. Um, I will, however, put up a video about fiber school definitely before the new year starts, because I now know exactly how I want to do things. And I'm going to talk about that in that video. And then fiber school will start in after in the second half of January. So I'm very excited about that. And I hope you are excited as well. And I wish you all a wonderful Christmas and happy Hanukkah, happy holidays in general. I'm actually not sure what, what you can celebrate this time of year. Happy Yule. Um, and a ha happy new year, because I'm quite con certain that I will not podcast before. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time and we will talk again in 2020. Bye.